Yep, yep, yep. I think we're here. So, hello, people, and um, welcome today to this particular episode on the YouTube live show where we are having parenting and pregnancy for first-time moms or moms-to-be. So today we are going to be talking about expectations, challenges, and tips. And it's going to be an interesting one. Like, oh, <laughs> I just wonder what could be going up in people's mind now, what to expect. And moms-to-be, like, I, we, we made this specially for you. We called on people because we know that sometimes we doctors will say our own and say our own and talk and somehow you get tired of listening to us somehow you're like mm, they're just being doctors now they're doing their thing and uh it's better we speak with someone who already knows the business someone who is in the deal and that's why i thought okay how about having this thing with a mom she can tell you how her pregnancy journey was what delivery was like for her and then how she has been managing being a mom the first time of being a mom so you are officially welcome to the live video very much officially welcome and we'll be bringing chisum ilora into the studio if you remember chisum is a clinical psychologist chisum is a motherhood and lifestyle youtuber chisum is a very fabulous mom of a beautiful daughter and again she's a makeup artist so she will be our guest today, and I hope you really enjoy this session. Now, before I get her in, I would really love you guys to just click on that share button, tap, tap, tap. Click on the share button, invite your friends, invite your colleagues, invite moms that you know and moms-to-be to join in the chat. They can get to ask their questions live and direct, and I trust Chisum to handle that. I'll quickly join Ch um, Chisum to the particular, this live studio now. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Hi. So welcome joining into this particular live video. I'm so happy to have you. And I'm so glad you actually accepted my invitation to come up to my YouTube channel and talk to my community, okay. talk to my subscribers. You know, we have a lot of moms here. And most of my um, viewers are actually young professionals. And Welcome, welcome to the studio. We'd like to hear from you shortly. Okay. Thank you guys for having me here. Uh, Dr. STM, I'm really honored to be here also. So I hope my experiences with um, my motherhood and pregnancy journey so far will be um, going, is going to help someone out there today. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you, thank you. So, guys, you heard from the horse smile. Um, we are going to take a little break now. Now, that break is simply for one thing: for you to copy the link to this live video and spread the news, like share it out, yeah. invite your colleagues, your friends, your family, your fellow moms and moms to be. And I understand that some of my viewers today are actually not just moms, some are guys. So that's to be and dads. And it's yeah. actually very cool. So share out this link, put it up everywhere, your WhatsApp group, your Telegram group, your Instagram stories, take a screenshot and put it up. We need people to know that something is ongoing right now. And that is why we are here. So thank you for entering the studio once more. We'll just go up shortly and um, invite people to come join us in once more. All right.
All right, welcome back. Like <laughs> it's been clicking of links and sharing, sharing. I, I'm not even done sharing yes. because once you start talking, I'm still going to go back and keep sharing. They need to be here. The people why we brought up this particular session need to be here. They need to listen to you talk about your own experience. Um, but before that, <laughs> I like to tease my guests. And I, I want to give you a game. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure okay. you're going to handle it fine. So relax, calm down. <laughs> it's not a terrible game. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Interesting one. <laughs> so we have 26 <laughs> letters, 26 alphabets, right? From A, yeah. B, C, D to Z. Pick okay. anyone you want. Just okay, let me start. Anyone. Let me pick C because that's the beginning of that's the, my name. the letter of the person. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. C. So C, she's on yeah. C. I got to go in yes. 10 seconds. Give us a country that starts with C. 10. Canada. Nine. Oh, great. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> in... <laughs> okay, so we're on that one. All right. A name, a person's name that is not Chisum, obviously, that starts with okay. C. Chibinyalo. <laughs> Chibinyalo. Oh, this, no, she's she just playing a long one. She just went to get the name of her baby. Okay, let's get another one. Animal okay. that starts with C. Cat. Ten. Cat. She's serious. Like, so she's just playing this game. <laughs> she, okay, she, you've got Canada, you've got um, Chibinyalo, and Chibi then Yellow. Cat. Let's Cats, make it yeah. a bit tougher now. Now we want okay. um name of a business. A Nigerian brand that starts with C. Get it on. Mm, creamy and sweet bakery. Ooh, just yeah, my friend. <laughs> we just it's actually this a game, baker like. in Independence okay. Layout Enugu. Creamy and oh. sweet bakery. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So you're you're just on top of this game. We'll catch you. Now we want <laughs> the name, <laughs> the name of a celebrity. Yeah, the name of a celebrity that starts with C. Choma Aputa. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're gonna give up. <laughs> she says everything, and we may just have to try our one. Uh, maybe we now have okay. to think again. Mm, what do we mm. think again? What do you say again? Name of are you ready for this? A fruit yes. that starts with C. Mm. Is there a fruit that starts with the alphabet C? Your mm. time is going. I can't think of any. Ah! Funny enough. Finally, we got one. <laughs> we finally got one. So you can actually think of cucumber. Oh, come to think mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> it's a so, At least one for us. Okay. I, I have Blue Big yeah. just missing everything. <laughs> you just like Canada, Car, Chibi, Hello, and now. We have to have one to ourselves, Jerry. When the teacher marks like she's marking out of 100 and the student is just says, you will get 99. Uh, even if it's 99.5 okay. of 100, you can't get 100. Now, now we get this one. Exactly. All right. So welcome our viewers. We are happy to have you here again. Don't mind us. Uh, yeah. We just wanted to teach you some a little. She was feeling like a superstar just answering our questions. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll throw this out. She said, I can't like, oh. 
<laughs> so we, 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 man, we don't know anything now. So we brought in Chisong here today to answer some of our questions when it comes to parenting, when it comes to pregnancy, especially for first moms. Because we understand it comes with tension, it comes with anxiety, different advices. You go for your antenatal care in the clinic and the nurses and doctors will do their own. You come back, in-laws will start doing their own. You go for your hangout, friends, colleagues, everybody's bringing up their recipe. Uh, do this one, don't do this one. Uh, doctors are just doing yeah. their thing. Okay, so that's why I said no. Dr. Stem is not going to be the one to say today. Let's hear from a different mom and see what the journey was like her huh? and the helpful mm -hmm. tips of course you know there is no way we doctors can tell you everything like if you come to meet me i can't tell you for example um you will need this gadget you will need this one this one will make baby sleep faster or this one will make you feel this i absolutely cannot tell you anything truth is no doctor can tell you everything that you need to know we can tell you things not everything so yeah. this now is a room for you a platform for you to come up and express and tell us what you really want to know. And I'm going to put up, trust me, once you have any comments, we'll bring it up here. So use the live chat, yeah. interact, and please share up this link. People need to join in. Use the live chat to interact. Let them come in, let them have fun, and put up questions. Chisum, are you good to go? Yes, definitely. <laughs> All ready. right. So once more, I have to repeat this introduction. Chisum is a clinical psychologist. Chisum is a makeup artist. Chisum is a motherhood and lifestyle YouTuber. And the reason yeah, for yeah. the day, <laughs> Chisum is a fabulous mom of a beautiful daughter, Bielo. I, I Maybe along the line, I have to get her picture so you can see the fine baby's picture. But for now, Chisum, how did your life change during, you know, when you compare before pregnancy, during pregnancy and after pregnancy, how did your life change? Let's get to him. Well, I would definitely say it changed drastically. As a single girl, um, everything was much easier. You just wake up, you take care of yourself. And when you get pregnant, it's totally different. Now you are thinking of how uh, someone else's uh, life is in your own hands. So I, I would definitely say motherhood changed my life drastically. Uh, you, uh, as you said earlier, you know, I used to be a makeup artist. Currently, I, I, I call myself a part-time makeup artist because <laughs> I don't go for outside jobs anymore. It's really difficult going for jobs because mm. imagine carrying a baby of 10 months old. Oh, funny enough, Binia turned 11 months this morning. So Ooh. she's 11 months this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, so we so just weird. have <laughs> so we just have one month to clock the big one. So yeah, is, I can imagine. Yeah, is is definitely definitely is challenging. I don't go for outside jobs unless it's working jobs in the studio. So I try okay. as much as possible to work within my own comfort zone. I don't uh, travel anymore because leaving my daughter for someone who can't really take care of her. I find it um, difficult, maybe because I'm too attached to her. Uh, so I don't have a nanny currently. So combining business and uh, motherhood is quite difficult and challenging for me. So I would definitely say um, be, pre be prepared. That's what I'll tell you. It's not the same. It's totally different it's like motherhood is a different ball game so before being a mother i will advise anyone to be prepared so it's not something you just jump into plan planning is really necessary okay yeah. um you know there is something you kept mentioning you were really particular about the fact that you had to drop some things to accommodate uh bielo which we understand yes. so and I think that's one common factor that every mother has been mentioning that something must be sacrificed. And yes. you, you know, you mentioned something along the line when you said, uh, how did you put it again? Um, 
how did you get to do it? Okay, not just about the sacrifice. You also mentioned it's something that you attached to the baby. And yes, I'm wondering, <laughs> is it because she is the first baby or because this is your first pregnancy or what? Because I understand somehow mothers are usually attached to the first. first so yes. if we have a number two, is it going to be the same? I can't really tell. You know, there is something they call Oedipus complex and Electra complex, as okay. you all know. So I think with Binyelum, I don't really have that. Um, is it? I think Oedipus complex is between her and her dad. Then Electra complex maybe is going to happen between me and my male child. I don't. You really guys know. get I your note I'm and paper. You got your <laughs> pen and paper. <laughs> i think i'm mixing it up but okay. i think the um the issue here is my daughter have what they call separation anxiety um she okay. finds it really hard to stay on her own most times my sister ella tells us stuff like this you gave birth to a drama queen but i <laughs> I think I think the whole thing is because of the separation of anxiety because she's already attached to me and the dad and Ella. So if it's not any of us within that circle, it's difficult. Oh, also and her, um, her grandmother, my husband from my husband's side, because even my own mom, she's not really attached to my mom. So I feel because of the whole separation anxiety, I'm scared of leaving her behind for someone I don't really trust. And she's a handful. To be sincere with you, my daughter is a handful. So is I, I don't think um, it's about the whole electoral complex yet. Maybe when I have a second baby and he's a male, maybe I can now link it up towards um, the whole Oedipus and electoral complex. But currently, I think it's just because she has that separation anxiety. Okay, you know, um, as you're talking about this separation anxiety, for a moment I'm like, uh, Somi is bringing in her clinical psychology <laughs> to motherhood, though, as in, okay. you can just get your pen and paper, <laughs> Somi is about to roast us. Okay, now, about the separation yeah. anxiety, do you think it's because of how you started out with her, or did it just start happening, or like, what do yes, you think? Do you definitely. think if at the early stages of her life, if there was some level of separation, she wouldn't have developed that? Um, I think mostly what caused the separation and anxiety for my own daughter, because there are different factors that can cause it, was because, um, you know, she's a COVID-19 baby, sort of. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, that's yeah, what we call 2020 babies. 2020 yeah. babies. Lockdown babies. Yeah, babies. we understand. Yes. So um, during that period, she was mostly inside. I, I I had phobia of taking her out because of the whole um, uh, COVID-19 issue. So because of the lockdown, she didn't get to meet people. She didn't socialize. So she's very picky. She's currently very picky. Before She can smile to someone. She will be happy. She's excited seeing you. But you are not, you can't touch her. So I think it's the whole um, situation she found herself. The environment shaped her into having this particular behavior okay so you guys let me bring it a little home what chiso is talking about separation anxiety yeah. you know when we come to Igbo language i say Mwana ronwa, something like that. Yes. Rom madonna, <laughs> some mother, something like that you want to carry a baby normal from distance she will be smiling or playing giving you cues yeah. gonna play with me and then you come to carry baby Oh, her would let loose. The baby will just embarrass you <laughs> and your generation. So I think that's Thank what she's talking about. Yeah. She wants only my mama, my papa, my um and aunt, my aunt. And grandma, <laughs> and does it. That's what Bielum is doing to us. Please tell her if she sees the test here, she should drop the separation anxiety just in case we may have one on one and she will not start yeah. being all this. Ah, ah, we are not accepting that. <laughs> all right. So, so far, um, we could understand that, yes pregnancy would definitely change a lot. It's not just about marriage, now it's about pregnancy. It's you, it yeah. will eventually change a lot in your life and something must be sacrificed to accommodate the little human being that just entered. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there's this question here that says, <coughs> excuse me, 
the first three months of pregnancy as the first trimester what does it feel like yeah. for well first time, for me really feel like? um for me i uh, i would definitely say the first trimester for me because i keep um hitting the um, hammer on the head women we all differ we all have a unique physique we have our own personality our own body mass so everything that i experience might not be the same for someone else so during my first trimester it was just like every normal day for me i didn't have the whole um what's it called um, morning sickness or feeling um bloated and all that i didn't experience any of those things so you know in nigeria movie mostly you see girls when they're pregnant how the sign that the first sign will be oh she's running towards the mommy <laughs> and the nollywood yes, mo so mommy I... who are doctors mm. She's, yes. pregnant. Oh, no, she's pregnant. No, no, that no <laughs> malaria cannot give you vomiting. Um, gastroenteritis cannot give you the only thing that can give an adult female, a woman of her brother is pregnancy or no more. Yes. So mm. um forget all those things you see in the movies. I didn't experience any of those things. I didn't have wow. breakouts or or loss of appetite or the whole dramatic Nigerian nollywood movie of vomiting i didn't experience all those things so first trimester was just like every normal day for me we um it was during the lockdown so i was always at home so it was just like every normal day i didn't know i was pregnant until like i was like six weeks gone so okay, okay. <laughs> so that, that's really interesting because <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to hear the stories from the clinic. You don't want to. Uh, so people will just be like, ah, this this is just parasitic for me and messing up my life. Yeah. We have um, the ones we call hyperemesis gravidarium. Like the vomiting is terrible. People are people yes. turn up with many things. And I would love to have this thing again with you, especially after we get our second baby. I don't know when, okay. or if she comes or if he comes. <laughs> because we know that <laughs> yeah. I don't mind my cough, sorry. We understand that um, different pregnancies, like each pregnancy differ. Comes with so its while own this challenge. one yeah. may be peaceful. Okay, she was quite peaceful as a baby in the womb and she came out Not and started... Really. Not okay, just really, that first three months. During, just yes, that first just three that months. First trimester. Ooh, oh, we'll, but we'll during come down second... to that. <laughs> we'll come down to so, the other yeah. trimesters then. So we want to compare what was the first one like, the second, and you know, to just know if okay. the story was the same for you. So talking about yeah. not really this, let's, let's now hear. Let's start with okay. which of the trimesters was more challenging that will be the um second trimester for me the second the second trimester yes because wow. during the second trimester as the fetus begin to grow um you know as they as the doctors will normally tell your ob they will be like that um the baby is your uterus is expanding and all that so when the expansion started um i had something they called acid <laughs> reflux so I eat and I can't keep food down. Like, you know how other people, they, they tend to vomit during the first trimester. Mine started during the second trimester. So I had this Ooh. acid um, acid reflux. So I couldn't cook, keep anything down. Like I eat now and five seconds later, I vomit everything. So it was that terrible. They gave me some uh, medications for that. Um, oh yes but it didn't really help so what i normally do is i take the medication maybe 30 minutes before eating but uh, in most cases it worked in some situations it didn't help but i noticed something during my second trimester i if i eat any other thing something maybe a protein carbohydrates in fact practically every food i vomit but if i eat um okra soup I don't vomit. Oh. So, <laughs> so I now had to switch because I was so slim during my pregnancy. Even my second trimester, most people that saw me didn't know I was pregnant. So <laughs> a lot of people thought maybe I faked the pregnancy because 
I didn't have the whole huge bump. I come to the hospital during antenatal and someone would be like, oh, I'm 20 weeks pregnant. And I'm like, I'm 20 weeks or I'm 22 weeks pregnant and your bump is bigger than mine. So it was that awkward for me. So I had to uh, tell my doctor about the whole thing that when I take okra soup, I don't vomit. So she was like, why not start taking okra soup more? And the good thing about our Nigerian okra soup is that it contains the balanced diet for your health. So I had to switch. So in the morning, I take okra soup. Afternoon, I take okra soup. (laughs) You are terrible. Imagine taking okra soup for like three months. (laughs) Of all soups. I like okra. I like okra soup. I I have nothing against it. But then, of all soups. And we have of varieties. We ha- I'm telling you, one of my favorite, <laughs> my favorite <laughs> soup was um, Nsala and Oha soup. Mm-hmm. But imagine taking okra soup for like a whole three months, non-stop. You, take, you lick okra soup as breakfast, you take it as lunch, you take it as dinner. It was terrible. But because I needed to be healthy, I, I need my baby to grow and be healthy also. I had to start taking it. Imagine that um, 30 weeks, my baby was weighing 2 kg. Ooh. So she was very small. Yeah. She was very small because I was not eating enough. <laughs> so that's why oh. when some people be like, oh, so me, I claim your body. I want to be like you. How come you were pregnant? Nobody knew you were pregnant. <laughs> I'm like, Better be you don't sure know of what how. you pray for. I'm telling you, don't God, be sure, where, God where, be sure of what you're praying for. praying for. Because your own situation might be better than mine, and you are praying to be like me. So that's it about life. Ebi no, Ebi no rana gogi. So that's it. So it was really terrible. Okay, so let's break some second things. trimester. Okay, uh, let's break some things down for our audience. You know, when you mentioned OBGYN, so OBGYN yes. is the obstetrician gynecologist. Usually, one doctor functions as the two the doctors who see over the yeah. affairs of women and their reproductive health. OBGYN, okay. so OB for the obstetrician, GYN for the gynecologist. And then there was yeah. a time you mentioned about acid reflux. So acid reflux is just like this common complaint. People will tell you, I have heartburn. Because there's a case of where the food particles within the stomach is leaving that um, compartment where it should be. And then if you remember our biology in secondary school, because I understand not everyone did anatomy <laughs> with me. So let's use yes. biology. biology. You remember yeah. food goes into your mouth, your esophagus, and then down to the stomach. So acid reflux occurs when the stomach instead of now going down there into the small intestine, it's, it's kind of going back into the esophagus. So you'll be feeling that bone because naturally the stomach contains the acid, the digestive acid. So if it goes back, that's the reflux, the acid goes up with it and is quite discomforting. And why it occurs in most pregnant moms, you know, um, pregnant women is because of the increasing size of the abdomen from the uterus, that's the womb. So it's kind of pushing excuse me, pushing the stomach. And that was what Chisum is talking of. Now, so I know we have other questions, but there's a question that popped up here. And, you know, we are not done talking about our trimesters, but let me keep it by the side. I'll put that up on the screen there. So next thing Digital is saying, very interesting and educating. And he has a question. As a first-time dad... Ah, okay. I think we we'll even get first time dads to talk about their own. No? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> they, they, they will talk about many things. So he's giving me a question. So, as I a first time dad, how can I assist my wife with some challenges? Because this whole experience can also be scary <laughs> and challenging for me. Challenging men. for women, yeah. Definitely. All right. <laughs> Up to you soon. So, um, as a first time dad, I would advise you to do everything possible to assist your wife. We have the house shows for one. You don't okay. have to leave all the whole shots for your wife. And there is something we call um, preeclampsia. I don't know, doctor, you can explain um, that better. It's a situation whereby when you are pregnant, you start having like your body tends to retain water. Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you clearly. Okay, yeah. Okay. Your body tends to retain water. You notice something that your leg, in most cases, most women, their leg gets a bit bloated or something. Either preeclampsia or enclampsia. I can't really say. But doctor, you can break it down for us later. So in situations like that, you find out that your your leg, your you more like I won't really say soreness. But in most cases, your leg is a bit, um, the muscles of your leg, maybe because uh, of carrying the pregnancy and all that, you tend to feel a bit sore in your leg and waist area. So as a first time dad, you can always help your wife give her massages. is really necessary. Believe me, she will love it. That massage, <laughs> massage sessions with her, just... Have massage sessions with her seriously. She's going to okay. enjoy it because um, it was something my husband was always willing to do. Uh, he uh, at a point he started calling himself a masseuse or something. So <laughs> it was really a a fun um, something to do with him. So when I was pregnant, then um, another thing is try to bond with your wife. I think pregnancy is that. Um, stage when a whole lot of things the wife is having a mood swing and all that so as a first time dad try and understand that her body is changing drastically she's trying to accommodate your baby in her uterus so there are all those romantic gestures that you can do like give her breakfast in bed you know <laughs> just do all those little things matter and you know we women we love attention so during those period, try and bond with your wife. When you guys have that bond and connection, believe me, is less scary and challenging. Yeah. Ah, hey, hey. I think we'll have to <laughs> to organize a senior men class for some of our dads. So they need yes, to come and to be romantic. Be, I mean, I'm some men you. are absolutely good <laughs> with being romantic, but some. Mm, 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 story for another day so let's see digitals you've heard it part of the things your wife will really want from you is that attention the massage yeah. and the being love. really intentional about caring for her and supporting her yes. during the pregnancy journey um just to add to the question so um what do you think is there any other um attitude or support the first to be to be that or first time that should give after pregnancy, you know, those early stages of having to get used to being a dad, and, um, dealing with a new mom, the mood swings and the rest. Is there any other additional okay. thing we should add? Yes, I'll also explain something. I think over here, um, most, um, let me generalize it, Igbo, um, let me not say Igbo men, let me just say Nigerian, the typical Nigerian men, um, um, the typical Nigerian man have this belief that the whole idea of taking care of a baby and nursing a baby is solely dependent on the mother. So I, I, I really need us to change that mindset. The nursing of a baby and um, taking care of a baby is not solely a woman's job. Both of you, it was a consensual um, agreement. Both of you came together and decided to become parents. So it's solely not just the woman's job. It should not be one-sided. So I think uh, we should do more, um, we should discuss more on how dads should help their wife also, something like that, <laughs> help their wife in nursing of the baby. You can wake up, you guys can have a schedule. Um, your wife just came back from the hospital. Um, so in most cases, she's going to have um, what they call baby blue. She's not going to just give birth and bond with the baby immediately and start doing the whole chores, taking care of the baby. But we are lucky um, that our culture allow what they call omugo and your mom can always come yeah. to help. But in most cases, when the mothers are not available, it's just between you and your spouse. So I will advise that um, the, the whole typical mentality of nursing, nursing uh, a baby is solely on the mother should change. So as a new dad, you can always help your wife. You can watch the baby's um, nursing kits. You can help your wife after um, pumping the breast milk. You can help to feed the baby. 
You can do all those little things. Not everything will be done by your wife. You can even learn how to give a baby a bath. Yes, my husband during our own period, he used to look at my mom and he would be asking questions like, ah, why are you putting this one here? Why are you doing this one? Why are you massaging <laughs> yeah. her? He was very curious. So I think when you are willing to learn and unlearn all those, um, what's it called? All those... Um, norm that the society have placed that is only women that is going to take care of the baby if you are willing to uh, unlearn all those things and you are curious enough to learn and help out then it's going to be an easy journey for you guys oh thanks so far for your answer okay so you know you mentioned something about preeclampsia and eclampsia and eclampsia, like, yeah. now this is <laughs> it's my own duty to talk about it. So what you are yeah. talking about, water retention and bloating and all those things, just one of the symptoms of preeclampsia. Okay. <laughs> Guys, pardon Sorry. me about this cough thing. <laughs> so so preeclampsia is actually, um, yeah. the person is hypertensive, combination of hypertension plus yeah. protein in urine. In a pregnant woman, whose gestational age is more than 20 weeks. So to say that someone has preeclampsia, the person's BP blood pressure is raised. That's one thing. Then yeah. when we check the person's urine, we start noticing protein in the urine. And this person is more than 20 weeks old in terms of the pregnancy. And the person was not hypertensive before. So, um, yeah. The aspect you're talking about, water retention, are all symptoms of preeclampsia. And these are part of the reasons why we are always hammering on people registering for antenatal for an clinics so that they yes. can be checked at intervals. Now, eclampsia comes in when that preeclampsia is not monitored or not controlled or not being, uh, and the lady starts having seizures. That yeah. is eclampsia. So these are drastic outcomes of pregnancy that we need to start looking out for early. That's why we talk about early registration for um, antenatal care. Okay. Of course, yeah. we may not be able to share this out completely in this particular um, live video, but at least that yes. gives a little idea of what preeclampsia and um, eclampsia is. Eclampsia so, is, yeah. um, guys, it's been an interesting one. Chisama has really answered so many interesting questions here, <laughs> yeah. including the one you're sending in. And, of course, you know how we do it. You can even put up your questions, your concerns, your comments, suggestions, or anything down there in the live chat. And I'm definitely going to see it just like Nesting Digitals did. And don't forget to take a screenshot of what we're doing now. Copy this link and pepper your friends since they're not here. <laughs> pepper them so they will know that I'm missing something. Yes, I said so. Yes. Pepper them. So invite them to come and pop in their questions now. Of course, the live video is going to remain public after this, but you know, there is one thing to put in your question and get it answered, just like we did for this chosen. And then um <clears throat> let's see this question. Did you feel depressed or overwhelmed at some point during your pregnancy or postpartum? Okay. Um, you know, in Nigeria, we use this term, depression, loosely. <laughs> I would say we use yes. it loosely because you see someone who is sad or someone who sad, is having listen. a... Oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I, I, so I is a clinical know. psychologist. <laughs> I, I think I know where that is going from. <laughs> so, <laughs> because I'm, I'm always battling with society on that. I like I'm that. I'm telling I like you, that. like, you come up on Instagram, everyone is depressed. I'm like, what is happening in this country? So I, we use that term, depression, over here loosely. And it needs to stop. Someone will get a diagnosis and they just term themselves depressed. Are you praying for depression? If you, mm -hmm. if you experience depression, believe me, it's not something you are going to be joking about. Someone, someone will just have a bad day and they term it depressed. So I'm not going to say I was depressed during my pregnancy period or um i'll use the term overwhelmed overwhelmed should be the term i'll use because um, during that period um i was more excited emotions was running here and there it was actually a fun um experience for me at first but because of the whole lockdown you are always at home i was busy doing nothing you wake up ev every morning and you don't have anything to do so i was indoors it, um at a point it got boring because i'm not used to staying in one place 
um yeah. my job entails that i travel often imagine every weekend i'm traveling i'm going to one village or another exploring yeah. another culture so but in um, my own situation when i was pregnant i didn't really have that um, opportunity because of the whole covid 19. so i'll use the term overwhelmed i was not depressed but when the baby came after my pregnancy, I had something they call them baby blue. Yeah. The first few weeks of my um of my uh, uh after birth period, postpartum um, period, I yeah. experienced baby blue. But because oh. I actually know what was wrong with me, I uh, I know the signs and the symptoms. I I I didn't term it postpartum depression because most women would have been like, oh, I experienced postpartum depression. But baby blue is what majority of us experience after giving birth. But when um, we don't overcome or we don't get used to, let me not say get used to because nobody gets used to suffering. Let's just say when we don't um, find ways to relieve that stress or something that trigger causing the whole issue uh we tend to um leave the underlying stress that is causing the whole situation for you you don't sleep like symptoms of baby blue you don't get enough rest you don't connect mm -hmm. with your baby and all that this is when your spouse and your mother comes in so if they can help you and you pass through that stage and uh, tackle the whole situation around you believe me it's not going to lead to postpartum depression but when yeah. those um, underlying causes are not tackled and you don't get better and within a few months or within weeks it can lead to postpartum depression so during my own period after birth i had what they call baby blue ball after one week i got over it and everything went back to normal yeah so okay uh <laughs> my mm -hmm. comment section is really interesting the darts wants their own session and i promise i'm going to get that please like, we are going to okay, take that, a look yeah. at this Let's take a look at this Ibu Amaka say, okay Doc, i love what you guys are doing please mm -hmm. do hold another session for men most of us know okay. nothing <laughs> about this pregnancy <laughs> issue especially when the mood swing thing it puts us on the yeah. edge and he's looking forward to that it's a promise okay. trust me on that i am going Definitely. to if I, i'll get i think i'll get more than one dad on session that day about two or three yeah. so that you guys will bombard them and uh, let's hear what it's their experiences are yeah, like and everybody get to put in their own so it's a promise yeah. i must do that see another one there in. <coughs> excuse me and Christian said, Dr. STM, nice work you're doing and a good one from your guest too. I guess it's Chisum. She's handling it like ah, like she's done this before. <laughs> then she says she, he supports the idea that another session be held for the first time dads and dads to be a humbling experience so far for me. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> okay, so sorry. No problem. It's not humbling. I think it's just <laughs> a new phase of life. So Congrats yeah. in advance. I think I know what that yes, means. Congrats. By saying a yeah. experience. But you get over it and you keep telling the story. In fact, one of yes. these days, you may have to be the one on this studio <laughs> doing this thing with me to tell us. Giving story, us that's tips. What gives, yeah. Encourages people. So we have another question here from Ella Ilora. She said, uh. What kind of new plan <laughs> is best for a pregnant woman? And is it necessary? Is it really necessary for a pregnant woman to eat for two? Mm -hmm. I'm going to balance and hear the mom. So <laughs> this one is no longer for the doctor. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Ella that is signed on this question definitely knows that um, as a pregnant woman, eating for two is wrong. Believe me. I think we have this mindset that because you are pregnant, you get to eat whatever you want. You so, can I'm get not sure those at the back bench are hearing you. <laughs> I think you can make it louder. They need to hear you. So, <laughs> as I said, because you're pregnant, you should not get away with eating for two. Yeah, seriously. We have this mentality that because you're pregnant, you can get away with anything. But believe me, is your health you are putting at stake. When I was pregnant, oh. I was lucky enough, I didn't crave for burger, shawarma. Oh, Cold stone. <laughs> you know, I'm hi. Ah, everybody knows me now. Ella knows I'm a sweet tooth. Like I love anything sweet. I can take Coca-Cola with Opa. 
eat no juice with Coca-Cola. Like, oh, and a few minutes later, I'm licking lollipop or I'm taking mm-hmm. um, chocolate. So yeah. I'm, I'm that kind of person. But uh, because I stand often, I, I stress a lot. I get stressed a lot because of okay. the kind of job I do. Yes. Okay. So I, it doesn't really show because I'm very lazy when it comes to exercise. But as God may have it, I was lucky enough. I experienced acid reflux, as I said earlier. So uh, I didn't keep food down. And come to think of it, all those things I enjoyed eating when I was not pregnant, I was not craving them. So imagine during my pregnancy period, I can't even eat anything that has has, um, sugar in it. I, I despised anything sugary. So, so that's it. you guys have so, heard I'll, it. Okay. <laughs> I will advise, even if you're having the cravings, tend to control it. Yes, you need, you can control it seriously. It's not because, oh, often salad and gum, you go and eat often salad. Oh, because I want cold stone, you go and take cold stone. Believe like me, the, you are doing yourself. Goes. Yes, but if you are the kind of person that is uh, into the fit farm journey and after eating the whole um, open salad and all those things, maybe after the pregnancy, you will be able to shed the baby weight. But for me, I am not the exercise kind of woman. If you look at okay. me, you see that. <laughs> so I, uh, but I take um, short strolls and all that, but... I can't really do strenuous exercise. So I tried to avoid anything that would uh, be of, um, what's the term for it? Just anything that won't really uh, be good for my health. So I control your it. health. Yes. Even when I was having those cravings during my third trimester, I started having cravings for like things that I normally eat. I usually eat before like cold stone ice cream and all that. Mm-hmm. But I controlled myself for one because I knew <laughs> I can't shed the whole baby weight. And another thing, um, when I talked with my doctor, she said, eat healthy. Like I had a meal plan. When she told me to start taking the whole okra soup, or maybe you can take okra soup and I give you then okra soup with a little portion of eba and all that. She told me just eat healthy. This whole issue of eating for two, it will be difficult because as I'm seeing you now, I had, um, I think in my, in my family, we have very little pelvic area. Um, I don't know how to expand on that. Maybe later a doctor okay. can expand on that. But <laughs> most women have like very little um, pelvic region. So if you have, if you are the kind of person that have like the same body mass with me, or you have the same body type with me, and you eat a lot, like busy eating for two because you are pregnant, you are doing yourself because um, when you get to the labor room and you're about to push and your baby's head is big, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> and you finish eating for two, and your baby is uh... really like, Maybe four point five kg. I say, <laughs> mm. your baby is weighing like four point five kg. Believe me, the next option is for you to experience pairing out here. They will mm. slash it. Let me know you. Oh, please, slashing is not the word. No, please elaborate on that. Um, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to like warn you ahead of time don't eat for two seriously this is not like me trying to exaggerate or something but imagine your baby weighing 4.5 kg and you have a small pelvic area and you need to push out a baby that weighs 4.5 kg it's mm. going to be strenuous for you so i would advise don't eat for two eat healthy that's the best the best advice i can give you eat healthy because when you eat healthy and your baby um baby's weight is proportional to your own body mass if you get to the labor room to push won't be that difficult i pushed out my baby within five seconds though i pray though this is i did novena hey our lady of spiritual help hey god see you need you need your spirituality if your spirituality um this thing level was in eight as a as a single woman, believe me, when you are pregnant, you need to get it up to 15 over 10. 
when I say 50 yards, just you need to get it up to 200% over 100%. Yeah, that's the right word for it. Because I did the whole, I did novena to our lady of spiritual help. It actually works. So I'll advise your spirituality, your spirituality level needs to be high. I joined the NSPPD like, oh, I was kabashing. So <laughs> and my number okay. one prayer point. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to I'm trying to be open for you guys. My number one prayer point was short labor. Short labor. Because I've heard awful stories about women getting to the labor room to push and it was terrible. It was a terrible experience for them. I was praying for short labor, short labor. So um God answered my prayers when I got to the labor room. Just within five seconds, the baby came out. Came out. So, okay, guys, yeah. so uh, someone has been answering this question. What kind of meal plan is best for a pregnant woman? And is it really necessary for a pregnant woman to eat for two? And you can see that she really took her time there. Like, you can see how passionate she was repeating <laughs> it over and over. Eat yes. healthy. You don't need to eat for two. Eat healthy. I mean, we've been saying these things. And it's one of the reasons for this session because sometimes, you know, it's like it's just the usual doctors and nurses talk now. But when you hear from someone who has even gone through the journey, I don't know for you, many of you, you want to finish pregnancy and come out like slay queen mama, and you don't want to do the necessary things. But this is one of the necessary things too. And you don't need to eat yeah. for two. And when um, our moms start telling us you need to do this, correct them. You absolutely don't need to eat for two. Okay. Then, um, I'm loving, I'm really loving this session today. We have a question here that from Sheila. Sheila said, can you really avoid weight gain consciously during pregnancy? I think it's related to what you just answered. Can you really avoid weight gain consciously during pregnancy? Like, is it safe to work out or practice portion control during pregnancy? So up to you. Okay, so um, even this person that sent this question is a mom. And I think one of these days we are going to invite her over for to tell us a whole bit about the whole journey. Also. Okay. So I think um, <laughs> practice um, portion control is really important. It's crucial if you can practice portion control. For, for me, I didn't um, exercise during my pregnancy. I didn't do any straight up exercise. I was just um, doing short walks. I strolled down the streets, come up also. So I didn't really do exercise. So I'm not going to like give you an advice of what I did not do. So if you're going to um, do an exercise or something, I think it's best you consult your doctor and know the particular exercise that is going to work for your body mass. So you don't go and start lifting weights or doing, um, what's it called? I, there is a woman I follow on Instagram. She's a ballerina dancer. So if you see her, she do all the strenuous um, ballet tricks and all that. And she's pregnant. Oh, you, we all know the popular Nigerian woman, um, Cora Obidi. She's currently six months pregnant and she's a dancer. And you see her dancing flexibly, like she's very flexible. And maybe that's her own way of working out also because she has, she has always been a dancer for years and she knows the particular dance uh, moves that she will do that will affect the baby. So I, I think the best thing is to consult your doctor first, know the particular exercise that is not strenuous to your baby. Then also okay. practice caution okay. control. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, when I saw this question, I was like, aha, they have set a trap for Chisum. <laughs> <laughs> so I was actually listening to hear your view, and you're absolutely yeah. correct. Exercising yeah. is not bad in pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. However, there's a caveat to that. <clears throat> you have to consult your doctor. Not just, there are reasons for that, because yeah. you will not start doing all types of exercise especially if you're not used to that type of exercise and there are exercises that are safe for first trimester but not same for the not late trimesters for, yeah and then of course we'll have to consider who we are seeing now so it's actually a combo of course you wouldn't say that uh, exercise i mean simple road work is an exercise yeah that one is as simple as so 
even women who are ready to bear down, when they come to hospital and they are not yet fully contracted or something like that, are still contracting or yet to, or the cervix is not yet that dilated, we encourage them, start walking around, walk the stairs and all those things. So you could see it's still a form of exercise. But I am sure that most times when this question pops in, is about these trainers, the more advanced exercises exercise, in controlling yeah. with. The truth is that pregnancy, obviously comes with some weight gain. But you don't yeah. have to now make yourself mame yabo. Sorry, I don't know if they, they prefer yabo. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> that's what we used to describe. Like, oh, you, you just get out yeah. of shape from what he is to be because of your own vices of not controlling what you shop and not even doing the simple road work. So you have to do something. Man, it's been an interesting 56 minutes so far questions here yeah. and there we still have a question yeah. from the comment section but um some people sent theirs via dm before now so i'm going to yeah. try to for us to touch them there's this question that is funny it's quite funny yeah. she said massaging of the perineum does it help you uh, to <laughs> reduce <laughs> to reduce tear <laughs> i know why you're laughing <laughs> <laughs> if okay, okay. guys, I, I want you to hear the question. Well, don't mind she so she's laughing because okay. it's her audience that sent the question in. The question said, Does massaging of the perineum help reduce tear? Perineum is your down area. I'm trying to find the simple words to make it easy. That private area, the bulk part of your vulva. So she said, if we are massaging it, will it help to reduce tear? during delivery up to you mama okay so i i did um a youtube video of where i talked about taking care of the perineal area so i think immediately after i dropped that video a few days later someone sent in this question so is that's why i started laughing you is a bit funny because um because i know how to um take care of the perineal area I didn't really just know how to. I asked my doctors and uh, the whole thing I did, that was why I shared the experience with you. Doesn't mean I know about massaging of the perineal area. So when this question came in, I had to go and research about it. I read an article concerning this whole thing. So uh, a few days ago, it was the first time I'm hearing about massaging of the perineal area. I did massage mine and I'm fine. I gave birth. So, but according to the article, when you massage the perineal area before childbirth, like during pregnancy, you can actually massage the area. So you can either do it yourself or you tell your spouse to help you out. I heard that when you keep massaging the area, it helps with the blood flow. So the blood circulates well around that area, making it easier for the baby maybe making it easier to contract maybe that's the right term for it or making the area more elastic to like open up for the baby's head to come out so you don't um, experience perineal tear but i don't think this is scientifically proven so doc you are going to tell us if it's scientifically proven because i don't know someone who have done this and worked for them so if we have an audience who have done this, maybe um, a mother who did uh, the whole perineal massage and it worked for her, she didn't experience uh, perineal tear, maybe they can drop in their comments and tell us how the whole issue or how the whole yes. uh, experience went. Well, like you said, science is evolving. It keeps evolving yeah. from this to that. It's not a routine practice for most people. And sometimes... One thing may actually be the reason for an outcome. But because you are doing that thing along with something else, who would say, is this something else that... So I'm going to give an example. The person that came up with massaging of the perineum could be very conscious about her portion control, what she eats during pregnancy, and was yeah. equally doing some exercises like squats, some level of squats, kegels, and the rest. And at the end of the day, there was no tear during delivery, no reason for yeah. seizure. And the person comes and starts preaching, massage perineum, yeah. massage perineum. We got, you know, we, we've totally yeah. forgotten that there are other things that were there in the equation. So massaging perineum is, is not a no, it's not a yes, but it's not an absolute thing to say that this will help 
reduced here because it's still possible what if baby is a bit on the high side what if the pelvis okay. is not as open so yes massaging perineum may be helpful but it's not the absolute supporter of that that's the major thing about that so guys okay. we've been here for one mm. hour one full hour yeah. so we should be rounding up hot, hot, <laughs> hot, hot, hot. i know you can't wait to go and see chibi yellow and um <laughs> we still have some questions for you but before then i'd allow our guests okay. and um audience to go get some water so we'll have about 90 minutes break and then we'll pop back 92 minutes and did i say 90 minutes Hello. ah 90 seconds break and then we'll come back and uh, uh finish up the remaining questions and we are done yeah the men are still revolting we still have some comments down there so those ones will be attended to but once you just heard that i said do for women no oh, men power no one i don't no, promise thanks. i go do we will. Mm, no <laughs> doubt i'll do that <laughs> i'll even get not just one guest we'll get more so we interact and see what it was like for them so just a quick yeah. break and see you guys soon Hey guys welcome back our guests will shortly join us in and for the past one hour we've been having a chat on expectations the challenges and tips when it comes to first-time pregnancy for moms to be and for first-time moms so uh it's been a really really interesting session we've had chisomi Lora in the studio popping up our answers as it they hot. Chisobi is actually a clinical psychologist. She's also a YouTuber. And her YouTube channel is Somi Laura, by the way. I really forgot to mention that. So she's a motherhood and lifestyle YouTuber, and you should really go and follow her. So you get more tips there. She's giving it to us like has it they hot, sharp, sharp. And then again, she's a very, very, very awesome mom of a beautiful baby and she's been here with us i believe that in the next 30 minutes we should be rounding up this session because was, we've had a long one really going and men i mean men have been revolting there in the in the um, comment section we had the very first one from digital she said it's an interesting um, session an educating session and he's requesting that as a first time dad how can he assist his wife and as we are saying that ibo amaka also said that we should do another session for men like it keeps coming up men christian even said that it's been a, a humbling experience for him so far and once you just join in and said please oh, we should do for them so guys it's a promise like you said we'll definitely get in something for you uh some has been here and we'll quickly get up and um finish up the remaining questions we have for those that sent him via DM and for those there in the comment section. Meanwhile, someone is giving us a shout out, saying nice one, Bez. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the support too. Okay, so we got up from where we stopped. <clears throat> so Ella said, yes, yes, since we are talking of this, will the vagina be different? You know, she's talking about why the, will it be wider after giving birth? Let's hear from you. Hello, 
Can you hear me? Your, your audio isn't as clear as it was, and it's a bit like there's water here. No, not yet. Can you mute yourself and unmute again? Let's see. What's Can up, you now? Can you hear yeah. Me now? Yeah. We are good to go. Okay. Okay. Sorry about so that, guys. So I, I, I think most young girls ask this particular question. Um, most especially when they're not married yet. I, they have phobia of... Um, giving birth and your vagina area tend to be wide <laughs> so i i also had that same mentality as a single girl till when i became a mother the funny part of it is that i the vagina is elastic i don't know how many times we we'll keep on saying this doc maybe after this you can elaborate also and scientifically tell them please the vagina is elastic like the elasticity or a B O has to ask from the elasticity <laughs> of the vagina of the V area, please. To all the young mom, aspiring moms out there, it is elastic. This is something during contrast, um, during um contraction, um, is going to dilate to 10 cm. You don't know how wide 10 cm is. I don't know. So it's going to dilate. It's going to bring out a baby's head. It's elastic. So don't be scared. Even if your vagina dil um, your cervix dilates and your vagina area can push out the head of a baby, you are still going to have a perineal tear. Yes, I know most of you are scared of the tear, the almighty tear. They are going to use scalpel or razor blade. I don't know. Some people say they use razor blade and slash you. No. Forget all those stories you hear. I know it's terrible. It can be scary. But this is what our mothers did for years. Imagine during um, the olden days, people do this and they ended up surviving. For now, we have um, medicine. We have um, a lot of gadgets that can help um, with the whole motherhood thing being a bit easy. So when I say stops like it's elastic, even if you have the perineal tear, they are going to stitch you up. You, you are going to be as good as new. <laughs> you are going to be as good as new. Unless if there is an issue, maybe after the whole stitching process and your, it ends up tearing or something. But believe me, when they stitch you up, you are going to be as good as new. In most cases, this is even going to be tighter than it was before. Yes. Sex is going to be painful after a few months it's going to be tighter even how will i put it more tight that's the right <laughs> Dog, uh, I don't like your you know th this expression. question is actually one of the reason i i actually brought you here because we've been saying it we've been saying it maybe we are not saying it anymore, but i'm yeah. sure we've been saying it i my colleagues so um so many health influencers they're on instagram facebook twitter the vagina is elastic. Like your rubber band. Like you could see me when I was turning here and there. I was trying to see if I had a rubber band so I could demonstrate it. I didn't have any. And when you said about 10 cm, for most people, 10 cm might be like, you know, it depends on how how wide your, your fingers wide. are. Mine, for mine, most of my fingers are 1.5. But assuming yours is two, about 2 cm. So 10 cm may be just the span of your hand that's what it may look like so and the vagina actually opens up to that i was once it's done his business yeah. it snaps back even for us the doctor sometimes if we gave someone episodial tummy this one we had to give it to protect the woman as you're even trying to suture after delivery you could see that there is already some um snap back already it's no longer as wide as it was when it was pushing out the baby Exactly. So the vagina will eventually snap back. All those yada 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 that people are making noise to just um, <laughs> make the women inferior trash. Really, that is I'm about the trash you. one. So, um, Christian said, "Is it normal for drooling to continue even deep into the second trimester?" So, what do you mean by drooling? Is it like your wife drooling? during sleep 
So well, I he didn't mention during sleep question. here. He's not. He didn't mention Christian. If you're still around, please, uh, you can give us an update to the question. But during if I'm like, to okay, assume, maybe if I'm to um, assume during first um, trimester of the person, I think the wife or so. I'm not sure. During the first trimester, the wife tends to the lady in question tends to drool a lot, just like some women vomit. So she uses her okay, case so but, much uh, and all those things and mm. is now deep into the second trimester so he's asking is it normal okay um it depends as i said earlier before during when we were discussing about the trimesters what a particular person experience might not be the same with another person i know some women who still spit and drew till their third trimester i didn't experience that you see some people that are walking on the road, they keep spitting, like they perceive um, uh, um, something, maybe an aroma of um, a scent or someone cooking a particular meal and they don't like the smell. They end up spitting and all that. I didn't have that experience. My, my nose area was still my best friend. Like everything was normal. I didn't drew and yeah. anything about scent or a a particular smell um making me to vomit or all those things i didn't experience it the actual cause of my vomit was because of the acid reflux so mine was totally okay. normal so i think for her to be drooling it, it, even into the second trimester it's because of her own body type that's just okay so it's definitely okay. normal so um thank you to that question you know what people see as normal is sometimes subjective and all those things. So, and that's why we keep mentioning this fact of go for antenatal, go for antenatal and yes. lay out your complaints. Complain. Because yes, it may be a normal pregnancy symptom, but another thing may be the reason. So Continue. just to be sure yes. that it is not that another thing, always remember to go for antenatal and lay down lay down your complaint she said you've been doing a very very fabulous mm -hmm. work for us today like Thank i'm sure <laughs> that's even why we sift more than one hour answering questions here and there they are giving this to us yeah. very much there in the comment section so guys you can actually use the comment section to drop in your questions and we'll attend to it and if by now you've not subscribed to the channel to this channel the Lord be with you. Yeah, Better subscribe, bro. I don't yeah. know what to tell you again. <laughs> like, you've been here enjoying the juice and you've not subscribed. Better subscribe. <laughs> There's this question here. Click the here. red it's subscribe button. Button and turn on the notification. And Chisum's channel too. So you get the update on motherhood and lifestyle. Like, it's important. So, so yeah. we have this question. I think it's important too. She yeah. said, what gadgets or accessories okay. do you think will be helpful to a first-time mom? Okay. Um, during my own period, I had this app that they called, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, internet and uh, what's it called? Social media has made everything easy for us. Yeah. Um, now everything is global. So I had this forum that I joined. Um, it's a forum for first time mothers also. Then I had this app. If you're trying to like get pregnant, there is this app I will recommend. Though it's an in-app purchase, you're going to pay for the app. It's called Flow, Flow app. So um, that's what I used. You can track your ovulation period. You can track your menstrual period and all that with the app. Funny enough, the app will even tell you when, you, when is the right time to get pregnant. You will see it. You just get notification. Bam, bam, bam. If you do the do from this period to this period, you are likely to get pregnant. So that app is a very lovely app. I think there is the, the, they have a free version, but I would recommend if you are um, a, uh, trying to conceive mom, I would recommend you pay for it. During my own time, I paid for it, I think 2019, around 4,000 for, is it monthly, Abby? I don't know, but it was not that expensive when I paid for it. So the Flow app was what I used. It was guiding me throughout and all that. Though sometimes it can be wrong. So, but is it makes life easy. You don't have to go to the calendar and start ticking and start calculating twenty eight days, thirty days after. 
everything is just putting your symptoms putting the last day of your period and it's it helps you calculate it monthly then there is another app this app is free because i was using two um the app is peanuts the name of the app is peanut so that one is free so if you can pay for the flow i think you can also download the peanuts app so the the peanuts app also was what i used though most times both of them sync like the flow app can tell you you are ovulating on the 28th and peanuts app can tell you you are ov ovulating on 27th so i'll advise get two apps because okay. most times it won't be the same so you need like two different apps also for it so that's what i did the flow app and the peanuts app then after i gave birth my sister gave me one another phone forum i've forgotten the name of that one but there is the one i also registered for pampas um what's it called i read somewhere pampas club uh, the name of the okay. forum is pampas club just google it pampas club is a good um forum for women who has given birth so if you if you go into the link of the pampas forum you just put in the day you gave birth um uh, your baby's weight and all that so it's going to like every day you get like a mail from them you subscribe to their firm you get a mail every morning from them telling you the milestone of your baby so like this morning i got a, a mail from them from the pampas club forum from the mail they're going to tell you the milestone of your baby but most times it doesn't work why i say most times it doesn't work i don't know because i do read it up and it doesn't sync with my baby's growth so um i'm going to tell you don't uh, assess your baby from what you are seeing on there from the campus club forum by now binyalum should be working from the stuff they sent me from her my store she should be working by now but currently madame is not working <laughs> <laughs> My dad has refused to walk. Like, so, so you, you understand what I'm saying? So don't judge your baby from the milestone or you start stressing over, uh, oh, this app said my baby should be teething by now and my baby's not teething. My, my daughter was an early bloomer. When the app was telling me my baby should be crawling, my baby has already started crawling. She started crawling at four months. So I expected by now she should be walking. But by now, currently, she's 11 months today. She's not working. So don't assess your baby according to what they tell you. Most times it's going to sink. Most times it's not going to be the same. So don't stress. The essence of you are having the Pampas, um, full, um, uh, Pampas Club milestone, knowing is just to have an experience at this particular moment. My baby should be doing this. But don't stress about it. Madame just... Um, had a tooth her, her fourth teeth came out is not last month okay but as of seven months they told me she should have had her her tooth but has started showing last month so don't compare or start stressing over it that so me said pampas club that if they send you <laughs> it's meant to be the same please no that's not what i'm saying um okay you know you've been for a while You've been talking about applications. You talked about the flow, P notes, and then the Pampas forum. Um, then, are there any gadgets, particularly like some moms got breast pump, some got baby rocker, um, all those things to carry okay. babies? And are there any particular gadgets that you think also may be helpful? Things that can help put them back to sleep faster, or things that can help. Um, as they carry them, all those things, just things that can help them. I think she just froze for a moment, but I'm sure she'll be back with us very soon. So, guys, we've been with Chiso Ilora, a first-time mom. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, sorry, guys. I think she's can having a tech me? issue. We'll get her in again. So, can you hear me now? She's having a little tech issue. Just accommodate us for that. And let her sort herself out and then she'll be back in. Okay. Can so you can you hear me, me clearly? 
Yes, I can hear you. I've been hearing you. I can't so hear can you, you hear me? Either. That's interesting. So, can you hear me? You see what we'll do? Try to enter in again. Uh, just I log out from the you. studio. So, I'm trying to help her. Just give us a moment. I will take her out from the studio so that she can join in again and then get her back in. Um, so she would rejoin in again. So for the moment, we've been talking about first time moms. Just give us 30 seconds, only 30 seconds. I'll be back with you shortly so I can help her get back in. I'm back again. Um, so I'm expecting my guest back in. I think she had a little issue with the network or her tech and she'll join us shortly in and we'll add her back to the stream. So we've been talking on challenges, expectations, tips to help us. Some can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank God. So we've won whatever that came. The village people, we've sent them back. <laughs> so no, we are back in again. My airport died. My airport died. Okay. That was why. All right. So uh, we've sort of, um, ourselves back. So guys, thank you for your time. What we are just trying to ask Chisum, she has already answered and mentioned some applications that will be helpful. So we're asking, are there other gadgets or accessories that might be equally helpful? Like this time, so you're talking about the hard um, gadgets, not just about the soft gadgets. Yeah. Yes, um, definitely our advice, you get... Um, uh, What's it called? Sis, um, sis Bowell is really important because immediately you're back from the hospital, a few days later, you are going to need a sis bowel. So I'll advise get a sis bowel for your perennial care because you don't need to, to be infected. You really need a sis bowel. So the next thing should be um, before the pregnancy, you should have already ordered for a breast pump. So I was lucky enough to have a sister who sent me one. So you need a breast pump, very important because you're going to be experiencing engorged breast. And sometimes if your baby is not willing to suck, you need to pump. So I also advise get a um, breast milk uh, bag. So you should be storing the breast milk in the fridge, not freezer. Don't store in the freezer. Though I heard you can also store in the freezer, then microwave it. But I think it's usually better when you store in the fridge. Mm. So um, store it in the fridge. Make sure it's cool enough. Uh -huh. So get a breast milk bag, all those mini pouch that they sell. Most times it comes with um, the breast milk pump. Then another thing I would advise you to get is um, a baby walker. Then there is the stuff I got during my own period. Is it like a baby swing? Um, why I say you should get it is because I ended up not using mine so often. But if you can get it earlier, immediately you come back from hospital, start teaching the baby to stay in the swing when you are busy, or always strap them in. This is also one of the reasons why um, Binia is so attached to me. I was too excited about being a new mom. I'm always carrying her. And my mom was warning me then. She was like, <laughs> this baby... <laughs> When you don't want her now, she will want to leave her to stay on her own. You need to start early to start teaching them to be independent. Like, oh, mommy is busy at this particular moment, so you need to be here. So I bought it late. A friend of mine recommended it, Ada. So she used it for her two kids. So she was like, then she called me. She was like, ah, you don't have a swing. You need to start putting her there so that she will allow you to do other things. So I went to get one. It's a bit expensive. But if you can't afford it, just try and know how you'll be keeping your baby in her crib if you can't really afford the swing. But the good thing about the swing is most of it comes with a massage um, this thing, a massage button. So you can put up a massage and it has a music box. So it's really interesting for them. So um, I would advise every new mom, save up and get that swing. It's really crucial for you. 
because it's going okay. to like reduce work for you. Then one more thing I will advise you. Ah, if you're getting the baby um, walker, if you can get the one that um, you can unscrew and turn it into a baby walker, it will be very nice. What I mean by a baby walker is there is the one that that round, but you can unscrew it and the baby can push it forward while walking. So okay. some, one mom told me that's the reason why Binye has not started working because she's scared. And her walker was not the type that I can unscrew and she will push it along. To so, walk along with it. Uh -huh. To walk along with it. She's used to being inside and pushing herself. Yeah. So I can't okay. unscrew it for her to push the walker. You know all those granny walker. If you can mm -hmm. get the walker mm -hmm. unscrew and they will turn to granny walker that are like two hands like this, then she push it along. That would be lovely. It's going to also help your baby walk faster. Okay. Uh, is there anything? Oh, okay. You need a diaper bag. So you need like all Pardon? those mini bags. You need all those what mini did it... diaper bags. Okay, diaper bag. Okay. Yes, that if you are going out, you are going to pack a whole lot of things. Believe me, all those your designers bag, all those your whole oh. bags. You're not going to remember them once you know because it's not freaking going to to your neighbor's house. You are going to go with a diaper bag. Very important. Because you're going to pack extra clothes. You're going to pack diaper, pack wipe, pack food. And at the end of the day, you might not use them. And you carry them and come back home again. Mm -hmm. But it's really important. Get a diaper bag. And forget all those your slaying designer's bag. Because you won't be Ooh. needing them in the first few months of being a mom. You won't be needing them. So Maybe the designers will have to start designing the diaper bag for us. <laughs> I think they <laughs> to have, have the situation. <laughs> It's pricey. It depends. Can you afford this? I think they have one. But go to me. Well, so we also have a lot of bags. Like, oh, we are going to sell different types and are actually affordable. So if you can go to me, so Enugu, that's where I got mine. Um, it's not as expensive as this normal Instagram bags, diaper bag that they advertise, 15K. I'm currently using a bag of 4,000 for for 11 months now and it served the purpose i got it from miniso for 4k rather than buying those 15,000 naira diaper bag that they're selling instagram so if you're well, the price is a relative thing is subjective for some people it's high for yeah. others is, so, is a yeah, giveaway exactly. so let them so, do their own um uh, so chisum has been mentioning helpful tips she started with the applications. I, I can't remember. She mentioned Flow, Peanuts, and um, Pampas Forum. Then she got into the hard gadgets. She mentioned Sisbo, Breast Pump, um, what am I missing? The Baby, baby Swing, walker. then Baby Walker, the one you can unscrew to help the baby walk, and then finally the diapers bag. And it's quite, quite helpful, according to her. You could, you could at least hear when she was saying, because she didn't do this, she's not having this. Like the yeah. Baby Swing that assuming she had it earlier baby may not be having this whole thing of separation anxiety now so those are the important things ah this question so okay christian gave us an update to what he meant by drooling then he said drooling is when a woman keeps having a lot of saliva in her mouth and she speaks every now and then so i think what we answered solves it yeah i think that's what we are talking about then um is there something else we are missing Okay, Ella said, I have one last question. When do you think one can start having sex after vaginal birth? Well, the doctor said six weeks. Six weeks after the vaginal birth. I think it's the same with CS also. Um, so if you have your baby through CS, or, I don't know. Uh, maybe um, Dr. SM can elaborate on that. But for vagina birth, I'm definitely sure six weeks is okay. So after six weeks, you can start doing the do. <laughs> well, six weeks, <laughs> six weeks is okay. And then the main thing is about um, as soon as you're comfortable to tolerate that as a measure thing. Because for some people, six weeks is obviously it's, not okay. Yes, still need so a bit like more time. Six so. weeks, I was still stuck. So, uh -huh. so you can see now. there is no fast rule to that. And then when we are talking about, uh, we are talking about the designers diaper bag. She said they do for. <laughs> you see what you are saying? Expensive. That is quite expensive. You see what you are saying? You know, in Igbo language, they'll say um, so polo one keto 
Rappers, yeah, <laughs> and them more yet. So yeah. yes, for some people, obviously they have their customers who are buying it. Sorry, yeah. my if my audience, if those, some of you that don't understand it, but let me try to make it literal in English to say, um, throw out the bone for the dog and bother less what about the dog and the spirits will go about. Let the dog take care of his bone, something like that. So it's about the customers now. It's their pocket. They know what they can afford and what they can buy. Anyway, for some of us, eh, not necessary. So, by the way, I want to show you guys the fine madam we've been talking about, um, the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I only really want to show you guys so you can see her. I see the fine madam. So, this is a fine girl. <laughs> There's a fine girl that we've been talking about for a moment. She's 11 months today. And uh, yes. she's the reason why Chiso is a mother, why she could give us these experiences she's been sharing with us. And of course, we are really happy to have her now. She's the one that Chiso described mm -hmm. as handful. I don't know if this baby looks like handful. <laughs> I don't think they so. The so yellow <laughs> <laughs> doesn't look like handful. Like she's looking so fine and cute and all those things. So, guys. So thanks a million for your time. Yes. Thanks for sharing this for us. Thanks for your knowledge, your time, everything. Like it was really an interesting session. She started with doing style woman for us. We are giving her, we are giving her a task to play, the task of um, um some what's up now. Do this thing for us. Okay, we said she should pick C. And she said, uh-uh. She picks you. No, we didn't ask her to pick C. I just asked her, pick any alphabet you want. She yeah, picked C. Pick I started alphabet. giving her. I said country. She said, just said Canada. I don't know. She's doing so well. I said, I give her name. Country. You see now. I said, name. She said, she be yellow. I said, look at this madam. <laughs> I mentioned, what else did I ask her? I think I asked about. No, I didn't say color. An animal. Animal. Yeah, she said cat. I'm like, cat. ooh. Until we got to fruits and she got stuck. I'm like, oh, hey. One for the DJ, one for the hype man. That one is for our own. <laughs> so we're able to catch us. And it's really been an interesting session with Chiso. Like, she yeah. took it down. She handled every question as they hold. And we had many guys revolting there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ella said, Madam, the madam, such a beauty till she starts crying. Well, exactly. that my clique, uh, that my people, I love them. That's what we are here for, to, to show you that we are around. So it's yeah. part of those things. Thank you guys for your time. Guys, like I said earlier, I saw your comments. I saw where you are rioting for us to do for you, like I'm highlighting. And trust me to bring that to you. It's a promise and we'll surely announce. In fact, like I said earlier, we'll try to have more than one dad in the studio with us so you can bombard them, just like we are bombarding Chisum today. She can bring up her own thoughts and we'll do this thing. I'm really happy to have you guys here. Some a big thank you to you for your time for thank your you knowledge for sharing everything to us and have a nice time guys see you some other time and please subscribe to this channel now i'm no longer shouting i'm now pleading subscribe if you've not subscribed and please get your subscribe. friends we'll leave up this video here we'll leave up the video here so you can come back and rewatch and those who are in now probably they are 12 there was a reason we chose this time now so they can come back and we watch the video so please share out feel free share the links invite people to come and watch it and do have a great week do have a great day and have fun stay safe bye thanks you guys, you soon. bye <laughs>